Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the Lathrixian Farms. In tonight's episode, we have one goal, which is a little bit of exploring. We really need to find one of the geysers, either the natural gas version or the steam version. Either will do very, very well, especially since it turns out, after doing a little bit of research, if we go all the way over to here, the performance combustion, we will get the natural gas generator, which actually produces water. Although it is polluted water, it's still an unlimited amount of water in addition to giving us a lot of power. I think it's something like... 800 power rather than the little hamster wheels which are only 400 each so that would be absolutely fantastic even if it does mean we would need a water filtration system to actually use the water it produces it would still be fantastic because that means unlimited water and then we can go into the electrolyzer to get unlimited oxygen. So already looking to the future for the unlimited gameplay. Now the good thing in this game is that if you go into unknown areas and zoom in, you can just about hear certain things. A good example are the Weezwarts. You can very lightly hear the Weezwarts in the background, but this also is true for geysers. And after spending a good half an hour zoomed into the maximum, I believe there is a geyser somewhere over here and one somewhere below here. So... I think it would be in our best interest to dig down, because this way we will get access to another cold biome, and thus we can start freezing this area even more efficiently. Now you, I would like you to be a little bit higher priority. There we go. So, let's destroy this tile here, and then simply build a staircase down. And let's build it out of granite, because... We're going to get loads of that as soon as we are in the cold area. This also gets us a load more metal, and we can also start grabbing some of this algae. Everything else going fine? And look, I've even repaired this little pipe, because a lot of people were talking about that. You may now continue. Actually, I think I will get one more person as well. Before we continue, I do believe we have reached that point. We need at least one more person, because honestly, everything's being done far too slowly. You have diver's lungs, you are very, very low on stats though, and you have a small bladder. Now the small bladder is good, because it literally means more fertilizer. So yes, Mima, you are absolutely fine, and the diver's lungs is the best thing ever. Well done. Welcome to our little group. And so, everyone just continue I suppose. Okay, the digging is now underway, and I would like to do one thing, which is to go ahead and place ourselves a cooking station. Not the best placement for it, but since eventually we will open up this area so heat can escape, it's a long-term placement. So let's just attach this to the power system, like so. And I would like to see what different options we now have available, because the whole point of this update is food. So... Let's see what new foods we can make. I believe we can use the bristle blossom fruit to make a food type which has less calories but is a higher quality food, which means people are happier to eat it and it won't make them sick. As I think if you eat the fruit raw now, you can get ill. I've been told that by a few people, although I haven't seen the evidence for it. So I guess we will see if they start eating it raw and then someone gets sick. Now that is exactly what I wanted to see. So we do have three Weezwarts straight away, which can help to cool down this room. I'm also planting one more already, so that once again this room can be our little cold box. Eventually, I may use one of the machines, whose name I can't think of the top of my head. Where are you? The thermoregulator to super cool a room so that we can start farming the wheat, which is this stuff here, the sleet wheat. Huzzah! Our first bristle blossoms are now ready to be harvested. Let's make that absolute maximum priority so food is always being harvested at a much more efficient rate. Because right now, they stay there far too long, and as soon as you harvest them, they start regrowing. So the faster you harvest, the more food you get per cycles. Per so many cycles. Words are hard, yo. Ooh, hello, the cooking station is done. So, we have the mush fry, which of course is the 
dirt, the mush bar, simply being fried, and as you can see, it needs 2,000 calories of mush bar, and it produces 1,000 calorie of mush fry. Oh, but it does say plus 1,000, so maybe 2,000 becomes 3,000? I don't know how that works. Once again, removes disease potential from food. Whoa, requires 3,200 calories worth of that. Interesting. Barbecue. Requires meat and the pepper nut. So right now, I don't think we can make anything, can we? No, we cannot. But it does also increase the quality, which is very, very important. So that would make people happier, although right now, everyone seems happy anyway. Hmm. Maybe we should make some of the mush bars to see if it really is plus 1,000, or do you reduce the amount of calories but increase the quality? It would also be nice to actually be able to make mush bars in case we do run out of food at any stage, since I'm still trying to figure out all of the farming systems. Oh dear, so I was just watching this happen, and it turns out the mush bars, you do indeed use 2,000 calories and then you make only 1,000 calories. So you are reducing the calories by half, but you are making it one level higher in terms of its quality, and you are reducing all disease. That's interesting. It also means, though, I would lose food if I were to make the Gristleberry, which is actually a pretty good quality food. A zero is much higher than all of our people's expectations. Maybe when we have more food, then, we can make that, because that's fine. A few less calories is okay, and you're stuck, aren't you? Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? Can someone please make this absolute maximum priority so he doesn't suffocate? Oh, we have found a natural gas geyser. It's down here, so I was correct with the sound cues. Okay, that's not too bad. It's also right next to the cold zone, so we could put the gas generator in here. However, I am aware that the gas generator simply dumps the water where it's standing. And that would freeze here, which would be really irritating to use. So maybe we could have the generator here, in this room, which admittedly is a bit warm, but we could always move wheeze warts here if that is a huge problem. Simply dumping the water here, we have a pump here, which then can filter everything out. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Okay, so cancel all this. We can now rush down. Ooh, opening this up, though, would allow the cold to mix with the hot very, very effectively. So actually, what we're going to do instead is use this as, as our generator room and completely knock through here so that the cold and the warm can mix very, very effectively, as I was just saying. So, whilst everything is being built, let's do a little bit of planning. So, we're going to make sure that the gas is stuck here, so... Let's do it something like this. Then have an entrance, which will be deleted at the end. And then we want a gas pump. Although, of course, we do need a gas filter, because there will be oxygen and stuff here which will damage the machines. So... Gas pump comes out. Once again, this will eventually be blocked off as well, so it's completely gas tight. And then the filter will be somewhere here. Currently, we don't have the filter unlocked. We will very soon, as it's currently being researched. This will then go off somewhere over here, or perhaps closer to the cold zone, where we will have our gas generator, which will simply dump the water on the floor. Now, I'm fairly certain, although I'm not- I can't confirm this until we actually do it, but I think the gas generator, you actually have to pump out the carbon dioxide using a gas pipe, so we will have to find somewhere to simply pump out the carbon dioxide, which I guess could be in this area. I mean, why not? Or we could just feed it to the algae terrariums and simply get rid of it. We'll see. We'll see how I want to play that later. I've just realized we have been completely ignoring the fact we've also managed to get a puffed by opening up this area. I don't think I have any use for you so far in this playthrough, but it's good to know we do have a puffed if we ever go down the morb route again. Right, is it a morb or a morp? I can never remember that. I think there's one up here. What is your name? You are a morb. Good, I was correct in the first place. 
There we are, we now have access to the natural gas generator, a power source that converts natural gas into electricity. It also makes polluted water and carbon dioxide. Not that quickly, actually. I thought it would be a little bit faster than that. It's still pretty quick, but it's not terrible. It does produce a lot of heat, though. I think I would want this made out of gold so it can't overheat, so let's go ahead and force some gold digging. Aha! There we go, there's a nice little chunk there which is easy to get. Anywhere else we've been close to? Um, don't really want to break into this area just yet, obviously that's not gold. Oh, we're going to dig through some gold anyway, so never mind, let's just put some ladders up there as well. Like so, and just dig out that whole area. There we are. There we are. The gas filter will be in place soon. So, where are we going to put the gas generator? Let's have a quick look at the size of it. Currently, we don't have any gold still, so I can't actually place it. But, so I assume the water's going to come out of the right-hand side. Judging by it, it sort of looks like a pump. So, maybe placing it, like, here would be good, therefore filling this natural reservoir. It would also be nice and close to the cold without actually touching it, so I think here would be correct. So for those wondering why I'm going for gold rather than simply going with copper or wolframite, it's because anything made of gold has a much higher temperature tolerance and thus won't simply break down because the area around it is too warm. And since the natural gas generator is producing its own heat, it would be better if it could tolerate said heat. There we are, the natural gas generator is now created, so let's hook it up so as soon as we start, we can actually, you know, start. Ta-da! So right now, I'm just going to be venting the gas straight into the area around it. That may be a bad idea for the future, but for now, the air down here is so thin, it's absolutely fine to increase the concentration. It just needs to be worked on later for a more permanent solution. And then, if the water does simply drip here, it should naturally flow down into the reservoir, in which we are going to be adding a pump very, very soon, as soon as everything's working. But for now, I just want the power. And that way, no one has to run on the hamster wheels anymore. Ooh, someone is stressed. Well then, here we are, almost at the moment of truth. So, this is the filter section, and of course we want to filter out any, where are you, natural gas. So natural gas will go through there, anything else will simply go to the gas vent. And so, let's open this up. And then as soon as that's open, we will remove this ladder. In fact, we can remove that now, since I can just jump down anyway. And then, simply put one more tile in its place. Don't worry me, no rush. Speaking of which, I will be renaming the duplicants very soon, either in this video or in the next. It depends on how much time we have. Either way, name suggestions still very much welcome. Yeah, right now you're just wasting power doing absolutely nothing. You're just moving polluted oxygen from one area to the next, and then allowing it to mix back again anyway. Well done. There we go, the natural gas is now out. Okay, so let's put down some tiles as soon as possible. Please, please, please. Either way, though, very soon some natural gas, there we go, is now going through. Quite a bit of it, in fact. So let's see how this works, then. Let's find out. Hello, Puffed. How are you doing, buddy? Natural gas goes in, and yep, it simply dumps the water onto the floor. That's absolutely fine, although that is heating up very, very quickly. That's why I'm going to be placing some wheeze wart next to it as well. Excellent, there we go. So now the gas will constantly simply go through. What we could do, of course, is place a switch so that we could turn this off manually, which would be fairly good. Oh, the temperature has stabilized. I suppose the water may be cooling it. It depends. What temperature does the water come out at? Okay, it comes out very, very hot. Maybe then what we should do is put down some tiles here, some of the ones which actually allow water through, and then dig out this section. We also need to make a fridge at some stage. That is definitely something we should do. Either way, though, there we go. It's working, and it's actually making a lot more water than I first expected. 
I'm not sure if I'm happy or annoyed by this. At this point, I realize that the natural gas geyser is definitely giving us enough natural gas for two of these generators. So we are absolutely fine in terms of power. And in fact, there's not as much water being produced as I originally thought. So we could very easily have a second natural gas generator over here. And then, of course, the problem is, what are we going to do with all of this carbon dioxide? We are either going to need a scrubber... Or we are going to need, I don't know honestly, perhaps some algae terrariums, but then of course that is not sustainable forever. Now where is the scrubber? There it is, the air scrubber. Does that require, yeah, fresh water? And then produces polluted water, so some of the fresh water would have to come back just to remove the carbon dioxide. Now thankfully it is reducing a lot of the carbon dioxide, but even so unsure how to go with that. And of course it is putting the, pol the polluted water back. How much polluted water can we filter per second then if we use a single water filter? Which I think is in refinement? Water purifier! Um, let's see... Five kilograms per second, so yeah, it's actually fine. We would still get more water out, but some of it would have to be recycled to simply remove the carbon dioxide. Because as you can see, it's already really building up, and this is after just two cycles. There we are, we now have a thermo switch, which means we now can turn off the gas filter and the gas pump at will, which over the course of a minute or so, will turn off the natural gas generator. And then, if we want to turn it back on, we simply press this. And back off. Okay, that's good, because right now we have four batteries and they're all completely filled. And it's still going. Even with this threshold, it will continue to use the gas. A little bit into the future. So, a lot of nothing happened for quite some time there, but now we have just placed the water purifier over here, which will use sand to purify our lovely polluted water from down here, which actually is rather cool. So it turns out that the Weezworts are doing a fantastic job. I have now removed the pump from down here because this will now be providing all of the clean water for our plants, which will eventually all be bristle blossoms or the sleet weed depending on how cold I can make this room. And honestly, perhaps limiting how much oxygen transfer happens might be a good idea, because right now, a lot of the cold simply escapes into the base, which is both bad and good. So, in a second, all of that will be set up correctly, just a little bit of piping left, and any excess water, which doesn't go towards the plants, will simply drop into this reservoir. And eventually, this will be replaced with the oxygen generators, the electrolyzers, and perhaps I will use this as an electrolyzer room once all of this water is removed. And then we will have unlimited oxygen. We are really that close already. Cycle 37, and just testing out things, but we are doing exceedingly well. And here comes the polluted water just in time as well, because the water here has basically all dried up. Does this actually have sand yet? Please say you've already filled it with sand. Thank you, you have. And that will produce water, which hopefully will work, since some of the water seems a bit trapped. Excellent. Now, of course, once they're filled, these will be ignored, but that will take a while. And spare water goes down here, and there we are. It's working, and that's all that matters. Whoa! Here's something ridiculous. The water coming out of the water purifier is 40 degrees. I did not realize the water purifier was so hot. And I think that's because the water purifier itself is warm. Oh, but it's always exactly 40 degrees though. I guess we should try and cool down the water purifier first. That is actually really concerning. Should have paid more attention to the numbers. That is ridiculous, actually. Um, yeah, we're going to need some more Weezwarts and just shove them here to see if that has any effect. 
A little while later, the water purifier has reached 51 degrees, and the water itself is still only 40. So that does seem to hint quite strongly that it doesn't really matter how warm the water purifier is, because clearly it's warming the water in the water purification process, and that's just what it's doing, that's why it's always this temperature. So, yeah, what a massive and really annoying change, actually, because that's going to cause all sorts of problems over here. So I think the best thing to do is just ensure that the water pure for now anyway, this is not the permanent solution for now, ensure that the water purifier is being cooled by some wheeze warts, and then ensure that this room has enough cooling to deal with the influx of heat, because the heat is now just going to be a part of it if we go down this route for the unlimited water, which of course we do want to do. A random thought. But since all this, the new plant system, is a little bit complex, we could actually completely move over to only eating mush fries. They're quite quick to make, and if we have two people permanently making the mush bars and mush fries, that would likely be enough for our entire colony. And of course, this does require water, but it doesn't mind the temperature of the water, so potentially we could have unlimited food already if we just did this more. In fact, we're already up to 20,000 calories, most of which is coming from meal lice, and then following that is the mush fries and mush bars, not the permanent food sources. Certainly something to think about, especially since the mush fry is terrible, but at least it isn't upsetting people, unlike the raw food, such as the, if we can click on the right thing, the meal lice, which is grizzly. Let's have a quick look-see. Can we actually use the meal lice for anything? Uh, yes, we can make pickled meal lice, which apparently don't go off. However, it's just as bad quality. Can we use the meal lice for anything else? Oh, of course, we can make the lice loaf which does increase the calories and makes it a better quality and once again just requires water. But sadly, mealwood is not a permanent source of food unless you do that thing when you uproot it near the end, which then gives you the seed, and then you replant the seed, but that's very manual and clearly not working as intended. So I may simply avoid that. But for now, I will make lice loaf. We have unlimited water, and honestly, we do want to get rid of all, these, all this hot water down here as quick as possible. Okay, I've been doing a little bit of math, and we definitely need at least a second natural gas generator in order to produce enough water. In addition to this, I am now going to set up the oxygen scrubber, the air scrubber rather, so that we can remove all of this carbon dioxide, which as you can see, is actually stopping the process of producing the polluted water in the first place. Once this is done, we will definitely have enough water for all of our plants, and then quite a bit spare, which hopefully we can then begin to produce oxygen with. Although at the moment, we do still have a lot of algae and a lot of algae not mined out, so we are absolutely fine for oxygen for maybe another 20 plus cycles, honestly. Okay, I've let everything run for a while and it seems like everything is working just fine. And we can actually add one more natural gas generator if we really want to, which can then go ahead and allow us to produce a lot more water. This is because our lovely air scrubber here can definitely remove more carbon dioxide than three of the gas generators can actually produce, which is really good. Each of the generators can produce 82 grams per second of carbon dioxide, and a single air scrubber can remove 300. That's why everything now is working. We have, however, ran into the problem of too much power. The regular electrical wire can only hold 1,000 power before it simply starts to break, whereas the heavy watt wire can hold 20,000, which means we do need to research this very soon and replace everything with it. The problem is, heavy watt wires minus 25 decor each, which is really bad. So what we will definitely have to do is make sure it's always in the tiles. So rather than going down the ladders here, go along the side and then down the tiles and then towards its goal. Don't really care so much about this stair system, this ladder system, because eventually I don't really want my people going down here anyway, but at least when it's in the base, we really need to be careful with using this. I also don't know how much it costs anymore, so 
there's a lot to consider. We've almost got the mesh tiles as well, and then next we will go for the heavy watt wires. Okay, so a quick correction then. It turns out that the heavy watt wires cannot be run through tile. I was so used to actually being able to do that, I was a little bit confused and simply didn't read it. Which means it would be an absolute mess to try and use them up here because everyone would be very sad very quickly. And we're already having a bit of a stress problem at the moment because of working in areas with polluted water. But of course, this is temporary, so happiness will come back later on. So rather than using the heavy watt wires, what we're going to do is be a little bit smarter when it comes to our circuits. So as you can see here, the top generator is no longer connected to the main circuit, but instead is simply powering all the mechanisms over here. We then have the first generator, generator, the original, which is then going up and powering the base. When we make a third generator, it will simply power something else or simply power nothing, maybe powering a battery section somewhere for no real reason until we have reason for it. Well, it's time to make people a lot happier. Right now, the reason why a lot of them are upset, other than of course walking in filthy water, is because the decor in this area is utterly awful. So now we're going to go ahead and start making the place a lot prettier. There we go, more of those, thank you very much. We'll have some statues over here to fight all of this. We can put some statues here and move the plants away a bit. Everything is going to be a lot prettier and thus, they're going to be a lot happier. Well, that was curious. Apparently Abe has a bit of a weird glitch. For some reason, his gun has changed into an orange rectangle. No one else is affected by this other than Abe. I have no idea what's going on with that. What a weird glitch. Well, I've ended up playing this game far more than I originally intended yet again, but either way, I am all out of time for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Oxygen Not Included is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, there are two major goals, the first of which is to get a third gas generator so we have more water, and the second of which is to completely redo this area. I am not happy with it in the slightest. I have made some glaring mistakes over the last two episodes and I really want to fix them. So I'm going to be completely redoing our planting area and hopefully we might even be able to start farming some sleet wheat even if we only use wheezworts. Basically I'm going to make a, a giant fridge so we can grow some grain so that we can have buns for everyone, because frost buns just sound amusing to me. So, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.